This will be available down below. Let's go ahead and get into the first lesson. Lesson number one is acceptance. Now, acceptance is key when it comes to first getting or trying to get a diagnosis. I believe Dr. Kate Redfield Jameson, she had a psychiatrist diagnose her. I believe it was when she first got into her graduate or doctoral program to become a clinical psychologist and she had a first severe manic depressed episode. Long story short, she did get very suicidal. She did start suffering from delusions and hallucinations, which is very common if you are undiagnosed bipolar and you don't have any medications to mellow you out. So, Let's just say there's a period where she goes through intense amounts of psychosis and at one point tips the fuck over. There's a part of the story where it, it becomes a little obscure, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what happened to her explicitly. It, it's almost as if there's a cliff and it just comes off. Nonetheless, she does find a psychiatrist who she does work with to help her with her problem. Anyway, when it comes to acceptance, you do need to come to terms, especially for yourself or a family member, that they do have a manic depressive bipolar disorder. Moving forward, if I refer to bipolar disorder as simply bipolar or BOLDER, which is an acronym for bipolar disorder or manic depression, it's all interchangeable. So don't try to yik yak about how I decide to convey this particular diagnosis. In a way, you are going to feel pissed or flawed when you first get your diagnosis. That shouldn't stop you from wanting to live your life because you have to understand that bipolar disorder is genetic. You didn't control it. For Dr. K. Redfield Jameson, it was her father who I believe went undiagnosed, had problems with alcohol. He had his moods of madness and depression. So again, it father to her, she got it because it was genetic. The first thing you should do is actually tell your close friends and family members because that's when you're going to be able to distinguish who are your real family members and who are your real friends. I remember when I got my diagnosis, the first thing I did was call my buddies who I had my first manic episode when I was in college. I was about 19, which is actually pretty common um, for the disorder. And I was going through these delusions that they were plotting against me and all this stuff. They were very understanding. As a matter of fact, they were very in encouraged to try and help me, given that circumstance. Under the condition that you don't agree that you have bipolar disorder, the caveat to this is you may also have a comorbidity or coexisting diagnosis, which is borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder is more of an external factor that's that closely mirrors bipolar disorder. So if you start seeing a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a counselor and they're on the brink of is this bipolar disorder or if this is borderline personality disorder, it's very imperative that you get a psychological evaluation done or you see a very, very well educated psychiatrist because being able to distinguish if it's coexisting, meaning you have bipolar disorder and you have borderline personality disorder, or you have either or but completely separate, it's going to allow you to, to get the clarification you need. So again, when it comes to acceptance, you have to come to terms with your diagnosis and that even though you are pissed that and you may have this underlying assumption that you feel flawed, the first thing you need to do is start getting educated moving forward. That's for it this section. Make sure you go ahead and check out that Unquiet Mind link down below. It will allow you to start seeing the person who is very well endowed into manic depressive because she's also made a medical textbook about this as well as she's being a patient and clinician. That insight is crucial to allowing you to get educated. Until next time, guys, stay tuned. Take care. Thank you.